Hey, what is up everyone? It is Rich. All right, welcome to a video. What we're gonna do today is we're actually gonna look at inking digitally in Clip Studio Paint, or as it used to be called, Manga Studio. So what I've got open here is a page of Chris Bacalo pencils. Um, it's not a high-res file, it's um, 72 DPI, and it's um, 768 by 1166. So this is essentially, you know, like a file you might find online if you're lucky enough to find some pencils online and you'd like to practice inking. Um, I'm not going to get into the ethics part of it. Um, you know, just use common sense and don't, um, you know, use other people's work for bad purposes. But anyway, so what I do when I'm going to set up a piece like this. I do a lot of demos on my Patreon um, for people that are more interested in learning to pencil or ink. And um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new piece of paper that I'm going to work on. So what I have here is I went into, I'll show you really quick, file new, and I'm going to use 600 resolution. You can use 400. I usually will use 600 and I've got it 11 by 17, which is standard comic book size paper. So I'm going to go, okay. Now what I'm going to do is I go back to this and I'm going to grab this file and I'm going to put it into my 11 by 17, 600 DPI file. The reason that I'm doing that is because if I ink on this, it will be very pixely. I'll show you really quick what I mean. If I take my mapping pen as an example and I put it on even a smooth setting, do you see how pixelated it is? It's because it's not a really high res file. So you're just, it, it's not going to be an attractive look. So what I end up doing is I go A, Control A, Control X, and I can shut this. Don't save. I'm going to go Control V. And do you see how tiny this is on the 600 DPI file? It's very, very small. So that's the difference of the resolution. I'm going to go Control T, and then I'm holding the Shift button. I'm going to grab this corner, and I'm going to pull this file big. Now, what's great about Clip Studio, and Photoshop has this capability too, but Clip Studio, for whatever reason, does it really, really well. If I, I'm going to hit Enter, now what I've got is I've got basically a really, really high res version of this now if you printed this out it's going to be dull your inks won't be though but if i just printed the pencils out right now it's still a low res file that's basically been somehow digitally made bigger but do you see if i start zooming in it's pretty it's pretty dull but your inks won't be now what i'm going to do is i'm going over here to the right and i'm clicking this first box which says new raster layer i generally work in raster layers so i just click it now i have a new layer this is going to be my inks. I'm going to double tap it and write inks and then hit enter. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my Bacalo file. And do you see this little blue? If, if you look above where the layers are over here on the right, there's a little blue box. If you hit that in Clip Studio, it will automatically make this blue. It'll turn it right into a blue line. Do you see that? And if I tap it again, it goes away. Now for me personally, I'm not a big fan of working over this exact color of blue. But do you see this strip right here that's underneath it, the long, thin one? I'm going to tap this. Oh, hold on. Uh, hold on. Uh, I turn it blue. I'm going to hit the slider arrow. Now that pulls up this. I'm going to grab a lighter color of blue. I like my blue lines very light. So I'm going to do, oh, that's a little too light. So click it again. I'll put it like right about here. And you could really, you could, and the great thing about Clip Studio is, I'm going to make this just a little lighter. Um, you, you can really work in any color you want. If you wanted to work in red, like say like the blue hurts your eyes, you could work in like a light magenta color, whatever you want. Um, but I'll take it back, back to blue because that's kind of what people are used to. So this will be good. Yeah, that's fine. And, and it's, it's nice and clear. So now I'm going to click on my ink thing and I'm going to zoom in. Now this again, it's not the highest res file ever. Now if you look over here to the left, I have all my inking tools. And what you're going to notice is the first like six or seven are what come in Clip Studio. You've got the G pen, the real G pen, mapping pen, turnip pen, calligraphy. Some of those I may have pulled in there, but now underneath you see all these ones called rich, rich grungy cracks, rich grungy edges, grungy ice, rich pencil, rich rough. Um, these are all either um, Flyland brushes or Frendon. And what I did is I went through the ones that I liked of their, of their brushes and I just renamed them so that it would be easier for me to find them and then bring them over. But I don't, 
I don't sell these or anything like that. They're literally their exact brushes, but just it made it easier for me to do it. And I'll have links to both Flyland and Friendin in the video description if you're interested in checking out theirs. But <clears throat> generally speaking, my heavy lifter when I ink digitally, which is not very often anymore, in fact, it's never, um, I use the mapping pen. It's my favorite. Now, if you look over here to the left, you see anti-aliasing. There's four options. I prefer it to be at the one at the far right. I'm going to have my opacity all the way up. I don't really use stabilization. I have it turned up a little bit right now because I think I was doing like a lesson or something. And I, I knew that the person using it probably would use it. But I don't really need stabilization. But I'll leave it on for today. But it's not really necessary necessary okay so anyway whenever i go in and i'm about to ink a piece um one thing that i don't do which i should do is i never really look at it and start to come up with like a strategy but you can do that alex garner who i worked with which was he was a terrific inker he's a cover artist now um does uh, like full digital work um he would kind of look at the piece and come up with like a strategy of line weights and stuff that he wanted to use. I never do that. I generally will start with something easy and fun and that I don't think that I would mess up. So this arm right here is just calling me. I don't know why, but I really want to ink this arm. So I'm going to have some fun and warm up with the arm. And then later I'll get into harder stuff. This isn't going to be a very long demo, but I'm just going to show you. So at a 600 DPI file, 10 is a very thin line. 10 meaning your brush size. So I normally will work somewhere between 7 and about 25. So this is a 7, which is very, very thin. But most people know that I, I when I'm when I'm as an inker, I do a lot of fine lines. But 7, seven is thin on a 600 DPI file. I'm working on a Cintiq right now, by the way. Anyway, so what I'll do is I'll I'll bump this brush up to about 17 and get like a decent weight. I might even go higher. I'm going to go to 20. So let's see what we got here. Yeah, it could even be bigger. But I'll do this for this. So I go in and I just start inking some lines. I should throw my glasses. <laughs> but one thing you're going to notice with me when when I work, do you see how I work a line? That's like a traditional skill that I use, um, meaning that, um, here, let me, I'm going to grab my glasses so I can see better. Um, I sculpt lines probably because of, of using rapidographs for so long, but, but I build all my lines up, which is not a very pen, pencil, penciler y technique. Um, you know, with penciling, they kind of tell you to sort of like commit to a line. So it's more, you know, you do a line like that. Uh, when I ink, I most likely sculpt lines. So now thin to thick versus thick to thin. When you're working digitally, you have the option to go very lightly and push hard. Okay. Or you could push hard and flick. I don't personally find that digital tools tend to do the push flick very good. They kind of do and they kind of don't, but it, it's definitely not at the level of a traditional tool. Um, and even if I lift my hand up, why is it stopping short? That's really weird. I'm gonna take the stabilization off completely. Okay, that's better. Stabilization was yanking my line. And see, and that's the downside of using stabilization. That's a good example. I was throwing my line and flicking it like this far. Stabilization was stopping it like right about there. And it was inconsistent. It wasn't even getting the point. So. When you use stabilization, you need to be aware of what it does. But again, I don't normally ink with it if I'm working digitally. And I'm always looking for a comfortable angle for my arm. So I rotated the piece because it's easier for me to throw the line this way than it would have been to do it the other way, to go up and curve into the left. Now for you, maybe this is an easier line, but for me, that's a little trickier to do. But either will work, whatever is comfortable for you. I'm holding down R, and then I can rotate the piece. And I zoom in a lot. Now, I don't, I don't know if other people that work digitally, if they go in this far, but I do. And you could see I'm kind of breaking up lines and doing like a little bit of stuff like this. 
just for some it will give it pizzazz now i'm going to show you a trick that i do and it's really important that you do this when you're inking either traditionally or digitally i'm always always let me uh i'm just gonna you got to be careful you want to use the eraser tool don't erase with a white pen um it'll it'll cause you trouble later so if i'm gonna erase the line i actually use the hard eraser um one tip for the hard eraser in clip studio i'll show you in a second i'm just gonna kind of finesse this line a little bit um and look there's a with any digital tool there's many many ways to get the same effects but i'm going to show you when you when you use the hard eraser and you're using the default eraser in clip studio you want to click on this wrench right here or wait hold on it's um you want to click on this show subtool defaults yeah so the wrench at the bottom of this little box here on the left you want to go into um the opacity you're going to click on ink and opacity turn that all the way up to 100 percent. the default when you get the brush is like this and or the eraser i call them all brushes um and it won't erase completely you want the opacity all the way up so that there's no um gray for the hard brush soft can be soft but you want it hard so now what i was talking about before is whenever i'm judging my inks i judge it like this i do not worry as much about the close read as the far read and as i get further into this piece i'll start judging my line weights even more but do you see that even at this size you can still visually tell that there are thicker and thinner lines on my piece. Now I could go in and start to beef that up, but there's a lot of other stuff that I need to ink before I need to really, really genuinely concern myself with what's in front of what. Obviously this character here, let me um, grab a brush. Um, this character here is in front of Cable. So as I work on him, I want to make sure that the lines are a little bit thicker than on this character but anyway i wanted to just kind of get you guys a little bit familiar with how i set up a piece and how i start to initially get into inking it if you want to see more videos like this please let me know in the comment section below kelsey and i are working on many new things for the channel and we want to make this a really great experience for you so we need your feedback Okay, it's very important that we know what gets you guys excited. What do you want to learn? What do you want to see? Um, and uh, yeah, so check it out. If you're interested in more inking tutorials right now, I mean, you could definitely go to my Patreon. I'll have a link for that in the description box. And um, yeah, let's continue this conversation. And uh, good luck setting up your inking pages. And um, hopefully that at least gives you a little bit of um, an idea of how I initially start a piece. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye.